your thoughts on this? Is this a, a great coup for Reform UK or is it just tomorrow's headlines won't make much difference? Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it's a really important moment. After all, Reform doesn't actually have any MPs and is often kind of mocked as never having any chance of getting MPs. This is how it is in a first-past-the-post system. It can be very, very difficult for smaller parties to actually break through and win parliamentary seats. And we are in a situation now where Reform is currently polling the third largest party in the UK, well ahead of the Lib Dems in most recent polls. And so for the party now to have a voice in Parliament, I think is really important. And at that press conference this morning, uh, the party leadership set out an ambition to replace the Tories in the Red Wall. Um, I don't think that we should understate the scale of the challenge that that will be. Again, as part of the first past the post system, we don't have um, proportional representation. It's going to be uh, no small task to do to do that. Uh, but I think that with a campaigner like Lee Anderson, um, who does articulate what a lot of people in those constituencies feel about the way this country is growing, they have more chance of doing so. So this is essentially a battle for the, the, the silence, the left behinds, as a, a Professor Matthew Goodwin would call them. Um, the problem, I suppose, some people might say is that he's a bit Marmite, Lee Anderson. You either love him or, well, less than love him. Um, <laughs> do you think that this is the sort of thing that could prove in future, a bit of a gamble, i.e. I, this could go excellently and build a strong cohort and identity around reform and hopefully perhaps see other people follow Lee? Or otherwise, does it risk sort of marginalising and typecasting them, allowing other papers and the mainstream media to point a finger and say, oh, well, you know, you're just the party of a Conservative reject? Well, I think all defections are a gamble. You know, if you look at the history of over the last 10 years of pretty much all political defections, and they're still an extremely rare thing, it takes a lot for an MP to cross the floor because that's not just them making a decision for themselves. They've got a whole team. You know, they will have four or five parliamentary pass holders who are attached to them as part of the party that they were elected to stand for. Um, so I think it is a it's, a it's a huge thing for an MP to make that decision, to go and leave behind their friends, their allies and their old party and join a new organisation. Um, and, you know, not all of those defections over uh, recent history have worked out. You look at all those Tory MPs that joined something called Change UK. Oh, gosh, um, Or I was it UK that. Change? Do you remember Change UK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Group, I and and none, of them are, <laughs> none of them remained in Parliament. So it, none of these things are an easy ride. But I think the point about Lee is that he does speak for a lot of people who feel very, very disaffected and they don't feel that either the Conservative Party or Labour right. understand And probably where won't care from. if the legacy parties in the mainstream media do snipe and gripe, quite frankly. I think those voters tend to get emboldened by their choices. Do you think, uh, Aubrey, that uh, perhaps Rishi might be uh, ruining uh, the way that he handled this? Because... Uh, what was Lee Anderson's crime? He said that he thought that uh, Sadiq Khan, the London mayor, was kind of in the pocket of Islamists. I don't think he is. I think that was factually wrong. I mean, trust me, I, I, I'm first in the queue to criticise Sadiq Khan for anything possible, but I do not think uh, he is controlled by Muslim extremists. That's what Lee Anderson said. He didn't put it very well. Uh, and then the Prime Minister said, well, we're, we're taking the whip away from him, although we don't believe he's Islamophobic or a racist. So why did you take the whip away from him? Well, don't forget, in the first sort of hours after Lee Anderson's comments emerged, there was that Conservative source who sort of didn't suggest that Lee Anderson's position was that far under threat. And it seems as though there were conflicting forces within the party mm -hmm. with people on different sides of the debate about what should happen to Lee Anderson. We know Sajid Javid, who was obviously a former Home Secretary, was one of those who was pushing incredibly strongly for Lee Anderson to be stripped of the whip. But there were others, even people in number 10, from what I understand, who suggested that it wasn't right to strip Lee of the whip, and they worried that something like this would happen. So it's Rishi Sunak's decision at the end of the day. He's ultimately got to sort of pay the political cost for what he did to Lee Anderson. 
and I suspect there'll be um, recriminations in number 10 for those people who were pushing for him to be pushed out quite so strongly. Mm -hmm. Particularly, I would suggest, if more people follow in Lee's tracks, Isabel, do you think that is possible? It's something that Reform Leader Richard Tice hinted at during that press conference. Uh, it's something that uh, I would imagine the Conservative Party are very nervous about as various Conservatives look in their seats and think, well, I'm... Given polling today, I'm probably not going to win if I stay with the Conservatives anyway, so why not follow my heart, be a conviction politician and go to a party that uh, more represents the way I think about the world? Well, the Reform Party's made it really clear that they're going to stand candidates in every constituency. So for those MPs, Tory MPs, who have fairly small majorities, or even actually, frankly, uh, what would traditionally have been seen as quite a safe majority, 8,000 or more, they've got a real decision to make. You know, are they going to... The chances are, if there's a reform candidate in those seats at the moment, lots can change before in, a, in the run-up to an election. We still may have six months or so to go. But the chances are, as of today, if reform fielded a candidate in many of those seats, those Tories will lose their seat one way or another. So I would imagine that a number of them are looking very hard at their own numbers, their likelihood of survival, and also their own integrity. There are a lot of Tory MPs... I mean, actually, I'm astonished by how many Tory MPs privately admit they are utterly disaffected mm. with their own party's leadership right now and, and their own party's record. They can't say so publicly. Mm. But when you talk to them privately, they're like, well, if I wasn't a Tory, I certainly wouldn't vote for me. You know, <laughs> it's talk, talking about someone who can say things publicly, Lee Anderson certainly can, and actually I think he said earlier in the press conference about actually standing up for what he believes in and where he's from. Let's have a listen. Now, this may sound offensive to the Liberal elite, but it's not offensive to my friends, my family, my constituents and some of my donors. Constituents like my mum and dad, who told me they could not vote for me unless I joined Reform UK. My parents are both nearly 80 and they get it, and I must not let them down.